Hi, my name is Tomasz Poszetek and in this video, it will be again a short video, I want to show you how you can complete a scenario that is that was possible um, in the old SharePoint designer workflows in SharePoint on-premises. Uh, and that scenario was that you were able to assign it as to multiple assignees and then configure the approval process to be completed after a specific percentage of approvals is uh, collected. So the approval workflow didn't have to actually wait for all the responses to be collected, but it was possible to complete it, for example, after 50% of responses was collected. And so this is not possible using Power Automate approvals. Uh, I mean, it's not possible using out-of-box features of the approvals in Power Automate. However, thanks to the fact that approvals data is stored in Dataverse in environment related to the uh, um, Cloudflow, I mean, in approval, in environment related to the cloud flow uh, that is uh, assigning tasks. And therefore, we are able to use this data to actually commit many uh, automatic scenarios uh, on this, on this approval scenarios, uh, on this approval data. And so one of these scenarios that we can actually accomplish is to build uh, a cloud flow, which is going to complete our uh, approval process uh, after, for example, 60% of responses is collected or are collected, sorry. Nevertheless, I have uh, a very simple cloud flow here. Uh, it's only assigning tasks like three employees. And what I want to, to do is to resume this cloud flow once the number of responses in the approval process is at least 60%. So in this case, when at least two out of three employees uh, complete their tasks. Now, how to do that? Let me show you. First thing, I will run, I will run the workflow. Uh, so with this, uh, with this approach to run it manually. All right. Now, the next thing I want to show you is a cloud flow that is going to help me to complete my scenario. So it's called, uh, to complete after a specific number of responses, percentage of responses is collected. And this workflow, um, it's designed actually, uh, I'll just go briefly through it. So first, the workflow is being triggered every time there is new uh, record created in a approval responses table. Now, the next thing it's doing, it's querying a table, a custom table I've built that is called the flow squad approvals. That has only like two custom columns. First one is the approval ID, and the second one is quota uh, of approvals that this workflow should be waiting for before it is resumed. Now, here I should as well put some... Um, uh, some condition that if there is nothing found for this particular for this particular flow approval ID, then the workflow should be terminated. But I didn't do that. This is just a POC. Nevertheless, uh, if the record is found, then uh, the workflow is gathering uh, all the assigned tasks and as well the information about approval record itself. So it will know, for example, uh, the title, the description, and so on. Next thing, what is doing is. Uh, gathering information about all the responses that were collected in this approval process so far. And then there is um, there are like two composed actions just to uh, visibly show the calculation steps. So it's simply calculating the percentage of all the responses collected versus all the responses assigned. So if the percentage of the uh, completed responses is higher than the number uh, of responses the workflow should wait for, then uh, it is going into this yes branch, otherwise into no branch, and let's say do nothing. If it goes into the yes branch, then the first thing it's doing is preparing the request body to be sent for uh, to be sent to the flow notification URI. And here I must make a pause and uh, tell you that if you're interested in how all this information behind the approvals work uh, works in in Dataverse, so uh, which tables are actually taking part in approvals, how data uh, is looking up is, is looking in these tables what changes is uh, are being made to, uh, to the data in every scenario uh, behind approvals, then I highly encourage you to go to my other YouTube videos, especially the deep dive one, where I'm really, really uh, explaining in a very detailed way how this whole approvals uh, technology is built and how it works, what is the schema, what is architecture and so on. Uh, and so you can learn even more. So now back to the back to the root topic. Uh, the next step is to obtain the flow notification URI from the flow approval table. And here the workflow is making it in two steps because first it is querying the flow approval table, trying to find a row for this, uh, for the, for the approval ID that has been generated 
by the approval action itself. So for this value. And then if it fails to, uh, I mean, not, it not fails, but then if the notification you re return by this call is empty, it is going to do another call. Now, why? That is because if you have a cloud flow that has two actions behind uh, approvals, there will be two records generated in flow approval table. The first one that is creating an approval is going to have the same approval ID as the, as the approval itself. So it will have that approval ID and therefore, uh, the, the filter, the, the data filter is going to map and find it. However, this action and this record behind that action is not going to have flow notification URI field. The flow notification URI is going to be present for the second record. However, the second record has a slightly different approval ID, some kind of a random GUID. I, I, I wasn't able to find any correlation between that uh, approval ID uh, generated for the second action and other data generated for the whole approval process. And therefore, uh, you need to find the second record, not the first one. However, if you use just one action, so create an approval and wait, then you'll have just one entry in flow approval table and that entry is going to have flow notification URI. All right. So now what I'm doing here, if, uh, if I, uh, you know, if, if uh, Cloudflow, uh, discovers that the flow notification URI is empty, it's making a second call. This time it is querying flow approvals table by using the run sequence ID value. The run sequence ID value is the same for all actions generated in this approval process. And I was able to obtain the run sequence ID, of course, by having the, from the first call. So here I'm just using the uh, run sequence ID obtained by the first call. And I'm looking as well for the record that has uh, a value in flow notification URI column starting with HDPS. So that's it. This uh, approach is really letting me to return uh, or obtain the flow notification URI that I need to call so that uh, the flow is going to be resumed. Then what the workflow is doing is marking that approval as completed. This is as well a very uh, crucial step because only then all the pending existing tasks which were not yet completed are going to disappear from users interfaces and they won't confuse them anymore, right? So that's very important to complete an approval. So first I'm completing the approval. And secondly, uh, I'm as well writing the outcome, the result for the approval. Now, in my case, it's like a fixed approve because uh, this is a scenario only for the approve reject. However, uh, what you could build as well is a custom solution uh, that uses the custom outcomes. So for example, in a scenario where you have custom outcomes, not only approve reject and everyone must approve, the workflow is going to wait for all the responses and still you can use their approve and reject. However, with custom uh, outcomes or custom responses, the workflow is not going to terminate it after the first reject value. However, what you could do is that you can build a similar workflow as this one I'm showing to you. However, you'll be counting how many approvals you have versus rejections, for example. And then based on this uh, ratio approves uh, to rejects, you will be able to justify whether to uh, complete an approval with approved outcome or reject outcome. So that's giving you even more flexibility in your approval processes uh, so that you don't have to really terminate the approval process after the first rejection is collected as this is done uh, in the model called approve reject everyone must approve. All right. So lastly, after the approval record is marked as, uh, as approved, as completed, the workflow is making a call to flow notification URI, sending this specific uh, request body that is matching the schema that the action that waits for the approval is expecting. And only if you send uh, that request body in that schema, you will be able to get out information from that from that body as dynamic outputs uh, uh, that are that will be returned by this action. I'll just show you that in a moment how it works. So what I have to do right now is to simply uh, get this uh, request ID and to write it to that uh, table that I showed you. So I have here uh, the table opened in an Excel file. I need to put this GUID in here and write the quota to 60% and simply publish this information. All right. So right now, whenever uh, a response is made, uh, the flow 
is going to uh, to look up that table and check if the number of responses is meeting uh, that that uh, number of uh, that expected percentage. All right, I will complete my first approval. So I just need to refresh my list of tasks. I should have, uh, yep, now this approve uh, the flow after sixty percent. So what I'll do now is to simply write a comment and uh, say I approve. So with that, with that, this is done. I can now uh, refresh a list of approvals here. And as you can see, no, not yet. And as you can see, there was one run three seconds ago. So because there was new entry written to approval responses table, the flow was uh, triggered and it simply uh, read the number of requests, number of responses, and was able to justify that uh, this number of uh, gathered requests, uh, sorry, the responses to the number of requests uh, didn't uh, cross or wasn't equal to the limit. And therefore this action simply uh, ended the whole workflow without going to the uh, logic behind the completion. So that was the first, uh, the first task completed. So because it was the first out of three, it was like 33%. And now the second one is by by John Researcher. So John has to, again, uh, as well, refresh his list of tasks and uh, complete his approve the flow after 60%. And, and uh, once he does the approval, once he completes his approval, you will see that this workflow, which is now waiting for an approval, oh, it won't be because it timed out. But, 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 it is still waiting for approval. As you can see, it's still running. But as I, uh, but as I open it right now, it should be soon completed. So the waiting should be soon completed. And so it's done. So it was quite fast. Uh, so after the second approval, uh, this workflow has been completed. And as you can see, uh, in these outcomes, uh, I can find all the responses that have been placed. So first there is my response. Then the second uh, is the response made by John Researcher. There is as well this approve, uh, the outcome uh, to mark as approve. And what as well you can see is that this uh, request body is available as the dynamic outcomes returned by this action. And that is because that request body in the end is meeting that schema the action is awaiting. So. Uh, if you return, uh, if you post a request body to uh, Flow Notification Uri that, it, that is as well following that schema, uh, then all the information sent to uh, resume the flow are going to be available as, does, as those dynamic outcomes for you as well. Wow. So um, having that said, uh, that is all that I wanted to show you around this kind of scenario. I again hope that it will be inspirational for you and it will unleash uh, you to create very sophisticated, uh, accomplished case, cases around your business uh, workflows and your, your approval workflows, actually. Uh, for example, those I mentioned, so to complete approvals after the specific percentage of approvals is made, or for example, to complete an approval, uh, if you have more approves versus rejects. And well, there are just, I think like hundreds of other scenarios you can accomplish with that. So, um, if you like the video or if you have any comments, maybe that's the first question I should post, then please write them down in comments below the video. And of course, please subscribe and then put the thumbs up and rate the video. Uh, that uh, I will know you liked it. Uh, and yeah, that's it. Thank you very much for watching and until the next time. Bye bye.